Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of every heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. On the night when Jesus was betrayed and arrested, Jesus knew all that was going to happen to him. He said to his disciples, the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. And off they went, leaving the upper room and to the Mount of Olives, where it would all begin. Love in obedient action is what Jesus referred to his behavior toward the Father in doing the Father's will. And it been, had been Jesus' theme all along. Remember when Jesus was baptized? Immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. From Jesus' baptism all the way to the cross, Jesus' love was an action. Love for you and love in obedience to the Father's will. He said, For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. And now, for you and I to remain in his love, it is to have this suffering and death of our Lord Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins stay as the central focus in our life. That's our main thing, to keep Jesus as the main thing in your life and in your church. As Jesus said, greater love has no one than this, that someone lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends. Today's selection of verses come for, are from the same chapter as, uh, as we hear. Uh, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. I picked up on that word abide. It's where we live. God's love for us and our love for him and for others. The Greek word is meno. It means to remain in place or to tarry. It's kind of the opposite of going away. To stay as in a house. Abide in our abode, you might say. According to Wikipedia, homelessness is a condition of people without a permanent dwelling, such as a house or an apartment. People who are homeless are most often unable to acquire and maintain regular, safe, secure, and adequate housing. Well, this week we heard of some sad news about homelessness from the nation of Brazil. The old headquarters of the federal police in Sao Paulo burned down and collapsed early on Tuesday. The building, which belongs to the federal government, was squatted in by at least 146 families. This is a tall building, or about something less than 400 people. According to the city's fire department, the building was already the subject of prior inspections and reports had confirmed its, uh, its degrading housing conditions. Homelessness is a real thing. But you and I, as Christians, are not homeless. Now, I don't mean that in the way that you might be thinking. The Christian is never homeless, even if the house we have right now gets foreclosed or should burn to the ground or economic circumstances should mean that you can no longer have a regular roof over your head. All those things can happen to any people and they can happen to Christians as well and do from time to time. But the Christian is never homeless homeless. You have a home with God, with Jesus, God's Son. 
So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us, writes John. God is love and whoever abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. Or as we heard last Sunday, abide in me, as Jesus said, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So love, as we use it as a word, can mean a lot of different things. But love for us as Christians is not a sentimental thing. It's a God thing. We are to love as God loves us. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. And whatever commandment Jesus was talking about, it revolves around love. If we love as God wills, then really the Ten Commandments are kind of automatic, aren't they? Jesus said, or as St. Paul said, Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not, commit, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Here at Prince of Peace, if you just come and go with little thought or care for other people who are also coming along, then I'm not sure that you're going to like these words of Jesus that we hear today. And why do I say that? Well, first of all, everybody likes to think, well, I abide in God's love. Who wouldn't want to live in God's love? That's wonderful. Who wouldn't want to do that? Jesus says, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. But what is that commandment? Well, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So if instead of loving one another, you have little regard for each other, or if you refuse to sacrifice, kind of like what Jesus did for us, to sacrifice for the sake of other people's well-being, well, I'm hearing Jesus saying that you don't really abide in God's love. Or to put it another way, Everybody wants to be friends with Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus, we sing. Jesus says he lays down his life for his friends. Everybody wants to be the recipient of that kind of dedicated love from a divine friend, don't we? However, Jesus says, you are my friends if you do what I command you. And what is this command? Again, it's this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Now, I have to say, there's countless times and ways where people here show God's love in tangible ways to other people. You guys are incredible in showing the love of Christ to other people. Whether it's group efforts that everybody knows about, or whether it's individual things that you do for one another that nobody except the two of you know about, you are abiding in God's love. But whenever you give in, to that critical, selfish spirit within you that looks down on other people or thinks that other people are stupid because they don't think the way you do or shrugs off others as being less important, it is those times that we're guilty of not abiding in God's love. I think of another kind of interesting text that Jesus gives to us. In Matthew 12, maybe you remember it, Jesus said, when the unclean spirit has gone out of a person that passes through waterless places, seeking rest but finds none, then this, rest, this unclean spirit says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house empty, swept, and put in order. Then it goes and brings with it seven other spirits more evil than itself. And they enter and dwell there, and the last state of that person is worse than the first. So also it will be with this evil generation. What? <laughs> What's that? Jesus casts out a demon, and then it comes back and brings more with it? 
Ugh, how horrible. But with these words, Jesus is telling us as his disciples, abide in me and I in you. The home of our heart and soul can be cleaned by the blood of Jesus Christ. However, if you choose to fill that heart home with the same junk that he cleaned out before, then you end up in a worse state than you were before Jesus first got to work on you. What I'm saying is that you'll no longer be living in Jesus, but living in the world where Jesus will no longer have a place to stay. So what I'm saying is we need to watch our decisions. Who do you hang out with? What media content do you take in? Do you read your Bible? Are you equipped to do what the Apostle John bids us do when he said, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. And the message of false prophets today come from Hollywood movies and various online resources. They represent all kinds of religious beliefs and humanistic beliefs about self-fulfillment and all the rest of it. They know nothing of Jesus' sacrificial love and the call of God to love one another in truth and in service. If that's where you live, then that's where you live and you're no longer living in Jesus. And that's why the Lord Jesus came into, the, into this world in order to love and redeem us because we had a tendency to go that way. And we were often finding ourselves trapped in those things. But instead he came to love and to serve us in a way that would make us at home with God like God had created us to be in the first place. Abide in God's love for you. Abide in him by loving others. These things you cannot do by yourself. God does them through us. Love, love is a God thing. The sacrificial love of Jesus is the love by which we live. And his love is the love that shines and shows through us. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this that someone lay down his life for his friends. And that's what he did. He laid down his life for you, not simply as a gesture, but as the punishment of God over sin, which he gladly bore for our sake, so that we wouldn't need to. And now, you're not homeless. The Christian is never homeless, no matter what happens to you in this world. You have a home with God, with Jesus God's Son. As Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. May the fullness of joy living in Jesus be yours always. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.